Hi everyone, welcome to these Python tutorials where we are putting special emphasis or special focus on image processing. For the last few videos, we have been focusing on traditional machine learning where uh, we have uh, performed semantic segmentation, semantic image segmentation, and image classification uh, using both random forest and support vector machines. So far, we only looked at random forest and support vector machines. And to be frank with you, random forest is uh, uh, one of my favorite, personal favorite uh, uh, machine learning algorithms. So I spent quite a bit uh, talking about random forest. But the new favorite, not just for me, but for the machine learning community is gradient boosting. And uh, you will see these in online competitions, whether it is Kaggle or other competitions that XGBoost, for example, uh, uh, is standing, uh, if not the winner, is standing in the top five approaches. So I thought it would be nice for everyone to understand what gradient boosting is and what is XGBoost, what LGBM filters. So let's spend this tutorial understanding what these are. In the next one, let's apply these for semantic segmentation. And in fact, uh, do a competition like let's let's do random forest XG boost and LGBM and see which one wins when it comes to accuracy and also speed. Okay, but for now let's understand what these are. First of all, let's look at semantic segmentation. What have we done? We took our image and we labeled certain pixels. You can go to www.appear.com to label your own images, to annotate your own images to generate these labels. So we did this and we used our input image to extract features. The features can be the pixel values itself, and the features can be the responses that you get from Gabor filtering, Gaussian filtering, median filtering, edge detections, and so on. And we captured those features and used a classifier, random forest or decision tree or gradient boosting or support vector machine. Gradient boosting is what we are going to talk today, but I want to make sure you understand where gradient boosting fits in this entire scheme. I'm not talking about all of this, I'm only talking about this classifier part. And we did pretty much the same approach for classification process, okay? Except in this case, instead of at every pixel, you're just taking individual image and extracting the features and then, uh, and then doing this classification at an image level rather than a pixel level. Now, let's just look at a quick decision tree. Decision tree is easy to understand. Well, you wanna work from lab because you're tired of working from home. So the questions are, is there someone else in the lab? Well, yes. If not, you probably would like to go. Yeah, there's no one, so no need to worry. Yes, there is. Now, the question is, is there power at home? Uh, you know, if you, have, if you have power at home, yeah, okay. The next question is, do I really need to go or can I work from home? If there is no power at home, uh, obviously, you're not going to be productive if you're at home, right? I mean, you need to go to work. Now, yes, you have power. Do I really need to prepare new samples or can I get my work done like image processing or something from work? Yes, you need to prepare new samples, which means there is no work from home. No, you don't have to prepare any new samples. You can work with image processing. Yes, work from home. This is our decision tree. Now, it's a weak learner, which means its performance is slightly better than random chance, but it's not superior. It's not great. These type of algorithms are called weak learners. Okay. Now, the question is, can we modify a weak learner into a strong learner? How can we modify this? And random forest is an example of modifying a weak learner into a strong learner where we take this and we put a whole bunch of trees together. This is called ensembling. And we say, okay, my tree number one uh, or, uh, you know, is giving me uh, uh, some prediction and the number two is giving me something else and and so on and you put all the trees together to create a forest and the randomization is coming from many aspects primarily from splitting the data and selecting the features at each node okay so in this example okay five trees uh, uh, one and three trees give zero okay and so the, my final prediction is one. If you look at this, okay, this is giving like one, 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 but then only these three are giving a value of zero. So I'm like majority voting. I'm saying, okay, uh, democracy here. So prediction one is what the answer is. So this this actually helps. This makes uh, this makes uh, this weak learner a strong learner. Now. Uh, let's uh, look at the boosting, like what is gradient boosting? First of all, let's look at what boosting is. It also is very similar to random forest, okay? It's, uh, it, it builds from individual weak learners in an iterative way. And the difference here is, unlike random forest, boosting individual models, right? You're boosting these. These are not completely built on random subsets of data and features. In random forest, 
it takes a random subset of data. It also takes a random subset of features. Uh, typically, square root of total number of features you have. Like if you have 100 features, it randomly selects 10 features at each of these node and then um, uh, you know splits those uh, that way. That's random forest. Here, it's not completely built on random subsets of data. It in fact sequentially puts more weight on instances with wrong predictions. What does that mean? It learns from past mistakes. It puts a tree. It's like, okay, did I get it right for these classes? Oh no, I can do better. And then in the next tree, it builds it such a way that it does better. It fixes these mistakes from the past. That's what boosting basically does. Now, just to take a quote that summarizes this, and here is a book, and it's a great book. You can actually, uh, you know, I recommend reading this, but relevant uh, <laughs> excerpt from this book. The idea is to use weak learning method several times to get a succession of hypotheses and each one refocused only on the examples that the previous ones found difficult or misclassified. That's what this last statement is, right? The idea is to learn from past mistakes. That's what boosting is. Now, gradient boosting, the term gradient, where does that come from? Now, each step in these boosting algorithms, how does it know that it has done a bad job and it needs to improve in the next one? And how does it improve that, right? So. It consists of weighted minimization followed by recomputation of classifiers and weighted inputs. What does that mean, right? So uh, if you look at uh, uh, weighted minimization, it's trying to minimize whatever that metric is that tells it that it has done a bad job, okay? And it's recomputing the classifiers and weighted inputs for these classifiers. This is very close to, in fact, I shouldn't have, this is very close to neural networks that we'll get to later on. Okay, please stay tuned for this uh, uh, so, so you can learn more about uh, neural networks if, if you're interested in that. So gradient boosting minimizes the loss of the model, right? Something should tell, if it is a linear regression, what is the loss? The loss is basically your mean squared error. What is the true value? What is the value I'm predicting? you subtract one from the other and square and take the average of all the values. This is your mean squared error. That is the loss function. The goal in that case, if that is your loss function, is to find these prediction points to tune the model such a way that you're minimizing this mean squared error, this loss, right? So that's exactly what we are talking about. Minimization of the loss of the model by adding weak learners using gradient descent algorithm approach. Again, I'll spend uh, uh, a tutorial on gradient descent when we come to deep learning, but just to give you a quick idea here. Let's say this is the loss, which is mean squared error. And you start like right there, whatever that weight is. So you have a model and you're getting your prediction from that model, but you know your right answer and you look at the prediction minus the right answer, you square it, and then you look at this, it says, oh, that's a large number. That's like up here. I need to minimize the loss further. So you kind of uh, uh, define your next weight, right? And then hopefully in the right direction. If you go in the wrong direction, the, the loss increases. Then you're like, oh, this is not the right direction. Let's go the other direction. This is what gradient descent is. So you go to the next step and, uh, and you look at the loss. You're like, oh, the loss went down. So I'm in the right direction. Let's change it further, change it further. This, this change, how much you're changing is called the learning rate, by the way. If your learning rate is a very large value, of course you'll find the, uh, uh, you'll converge very fast, but you will not converge to the right minimum. Okay, but if your if your if your uh, loss is very small, meaning you're taking very small steps to find this loss, then you may be ge getting stuck in this in this in this uh, valley right here. But the global minimum is right here when it comes to your loss function. I hope this makes sense. All you're trying to do is find the minimum in this loss function for regression. Mean squared error is a great exa uh, example, uh, and trying to find this minimum, right? So. To do this task, it uses gradient descent algorithm, okay? So that's why this is called gradient boosting, okay? Even if you don't understand this completely, you can still use it, but it does help to understand these things. Uh, okay, so now the summary of gradient boosting is it uses decision trees as weak learners, just like random forest, it uses decision trees, okay? The trees are added one at a time and 
while you're adding it, you're looking at this loss of the previous ones and then you're minimizing the loss, meaning you're learning from the past mistakes. So it's gradient descent is used to minimize this loss when adding these trees. That's why it's gradient boosting. Okay, and what loss function? It completely depends on your problem, right? I mean, mean squared error I just mentioned is for regression, and you can use log loss for any type of classification, and you know many other loss functions. Again, we'll spend one full video when we get to the deep learning part, just talking about loss functions. Now, XGBoost is a Python library, and there's a paper that got published on XGBoost, and it stands for Extreme Gradient Boosting. And it is gradient boosting. It's just a Python library uh, that's based on gradient boosting. Now, what uh, uh, what exactly is it? You can go ahead and read the paper, but it's developed by University of Washington, and it really uh, got credited by winning numerous Kaggle competitions. And this is basically an improved version of the gradient boosting, the standard one, except they have optimized the speed and accuracy. And they use a lot of tricks to improve the speed and accuracy. Otherwise, this can be very slow. What did they do? Well, the primary things. They compute second order gradient. Remember, gradient is nothing but the slope, right? Of this, uh, of, of your, uh, of your uh, uh, loss function, let's say. So gradient is just looking at the slope. But if you do the second order gradient, you figure out the direction, right? Second order gradient gives you the direction of the slope. So that's what they do. And also they used regularization to prevent overfitting. Okay, and uh, parallelization is another important thing. So the parallelized for fast computing. So basically it's speed. I mean, you improve the speed with this. Now light GBM, as the name suggests, light stands for light, you know, the, uh, and gradient uh, boosting. And this is, again, one of the fast ones. In fact, this is faster than XGBoost. Now, is it more accurate? We'll find that out in the next video when we actually compare random forest XGBoost and light GBM on the same problem. And then so we get a much better understanding in terms of uh, what are you sacrificing by improving the speed? Okay, so this is again a fast one. It splits the tree leaf wise. All the other ones we just talked, it, uh, they split the tree, uh, you know, at the tree wise or a level wise, if you want to call it. And uh, uh, that potentially leaves uh, this model for overfitting. Now that can be minimized by defining the depth of the splitting. You can actually say, okay, only go down to like 10 or 20 and not to like 100 uh, in terms of the depth. Okay, so that's, uh, there are numerous hyperparameters that you can use to optimize the light GBM. So if you play with these hyperparameters, when I say hyperparameters, that is, that includes how many level deep do you want to go? What is the width? And uh, uh, including uh, learning rate, you know, we just talked about that also can be optimized. So all of these can be optimized. And if you can actually do that, you get a much faster way of uh, classifying using light GBM. So this is, uh, I tested this uh, quite a few times and it's definitely faster than random forest and gradient boost. Now, which one is more accurate? Let's actually keep that a mystery and let's save that until our uh, next video. So please join in the next video. Again, subscribe to this channel so you get notified as soon as that video gets uploaded. So let's meet again in the next tutorial where we uh, put these three to the test and see which one wins.